Well, how did you first get to know the Prince of Wales? When did you first meet him? I think it must have been about 1921 when I got to know him and his brothers fairly well because at that time London life was very gay and there were marvellous balls and parties uh, through the summer to which uh, the Prince of Wales and his brothers always came. And then we had weekends in the country and then visits to Scotland in the autumn and one saw a great deal of them in that way. Of course, he was very, very busy working most days, but very often in the evening he was free to come to something that was amusing. People remark on his uh, enormous charm. How does his character and personality strike you now? Oh, there's no doubt about it. He had uh, enchanting looks, and um, he had more charm than almost anybody I've known, uh, he had a most appealing and rather shy smile uh, and also a great sense of humour. He wanted to enjoy life a great deal and he found the many restrictions that were all around him. Uh, uh, they maddened him a good deal. Uh, he was a most wonderful mixer, especially uh, with working people. And at that time, there was a great deal of unemployment. And the crypts of many churches were made into clubs for the unemployed. And uh, he used to go there of an evening, and uh, over a glass of beer or playing darts, he would in no time at all have all the men laughing and joking with him and telling him of their worries. In fact, he was much more at home, and much more himself, uh, under those circumstances, then in a rather formal grand occasion, which he didn't enjoy very much. Well, one suspects that he might have been rather a moody person. I think he was up and down a great deal. I think he had uh, days of being very depressed and other days of being very gay when he was with the people that he enjoyed being with. What is the sort of charm that uh, small boys sometimes put on in order to get their own way? Or was it no, it was much more natural. It wasn't, uh, it, it wasn't forced at all. It just bubbled out. And you must say that from his pictures, uh, his looks were very attractive. Was he sometimes caught off guard? He wasn't feeling quite so charming. Oh, I think he had, was moody, and there were m many occasions when he either f found the way uh, uh, he had to behave was boring or too grand for him, and he wanted uh, to make it more natural, because he was a very natural person, and he didn't like uh, the rather grand life that he had to live. Did he make it easy for people uh, to be familiar with him? You were never really very familiar, uh, and those who say that they always called him David, quite frankly, that's, I don't think, true. Uh, nobody could have been more intimate with him than my husband, and he never called him David. I was going to go on to ask you about how your husband met him. Uh, when the Prince of Wales went to India in 1921, um, I didn't know my husband then, I hadn't even met him, uh, but he was chosen uh, to represent the Indian cavalry because he was in a famous regiment called Skinner's Horse and they wanted to have one member of the Indian cavalry on the staff of the Prince of Wales and so he had the great honour of being chosen and he was put in charge of all the horses and the polo ponies and the carriage horses, in fact the sport of the whole tour. Um, the prince took an immediate uh, liking to him and so towards the end of the tour he asked my husband if he would join his staff and return to England with him uh, which naturally my husband uh, was only too pleased to do and so he finished the tour with him and then came back to London and remained on his staff until we married. What were the qualities do you think in your husband that the uh, prince appreciated? I can only say they enjoyed each other's company and being with each other more than any two people I've seen. They really had 
a great bond in common and they had the same humour and they laughed at the same things and they got on absolutely beautifully and it was a joy to be with them because they enjoyed each other so much. They always looked very happy in photographs. Yeah, well they were, they were very happy together. Of course when you married your husband you got to know the, the prince much better. Oh yes, after my marriage uh, the prince came constantly to stay with us and we went very often to the fort. It was always gay and informal and most enjoyable. What sort of things went on at the fort? I mean, Well, we played golf uh, most days and then we did a great deal of gardening because he was very keen on his garden so we all had to cut down the rhododendrons and prune them and dig and do that kind of work and then he had a swimming pool so in the summer we used to swim in the pool. One amusing story, which I remember, there were many of these situations, but perhaps this is one that's amusing to tell. We had a house near Epsom, and King Alfonso of Spain was staying with us, and it was the Prince of Wales's birthday, and he wanted to spend it with us, but he had to dine with the King and Queen at Buckingham Palace, but he said he'd motor down after dinner. It got fairly late and so we thought that something must have stopped him coming so we decided to go to bed. But my husband and I had hardly got there when we heard the car drive up so in his dressing gown he ran down to meet the prince. Up to my room they both came with a bottle of champagne and we were celebrating gaily when the door opened and there was the king, Alfonso, in a splendid white nightshirt and a very saucy nightcap with a tassel, asking if he could join us. So on to the spacious bed he climbed, and we had a highly enjoyable but rather unusual birthday party. So he was capable of that degree of uh, relaxation? Oh, absolutely. That is, he was in his element on those occasions, and he rarely had the most marvellous sense of humour. And so there was never a chance of not having fun with him.